Today, I compiled several of my favorite fall projects into one video along with one new project you haven't seen yet, so let's get started. You're going to need two sheets of cardstock in any color, whatever matches your home decor, along with two sheets of vellum. I'm making a paper lantern here and found this free cut file from the blog Heartfilled Spaces, and I will link that below in my description box in case you're interested in recreating these. But you will find cut files for all of the pieces ready to go for you, super simple. Just download and then upload it to your cutting machine. I have a Cricut and it used the PNG file and let my machine do all the hard work. I know not everyone has a cutting machine, but you could certainly print these out on a printer and then cut them out by hand or with an X-Acto knife for those little details. And here's how all the pieces look once they're cut. Next, take each of the detailed panel pieces and glue one of the vellum pieces directly on top of it. I used a glue stick here and that was perfect. There are score lines on the panels, but I didn't have a scoring tool, so I had the lines drawn onto the panels, and then you wanna fold them. We're going to glue each panel around one of these circleish shapes. So for this portion and the rest of the gluing on this project, I used my tacky glue and glued all of the panels around that smaller size circle. Now take the second small circle and glue that right on top. This is gonna cover up the end of all those panels and give a cleaner look. Flip the paper over now so that the vellum side is facing up. Then take the four rectangular pieces and glue them evenly spaced around the lantern. Now we're gonna start closing it up. So you take the larger circle-ish piece and glue the ends of each panel to that. But you don't wanna completely close up the lantern just yet. Leave a few of those pieces open and then take the rectangle pieces that we glued into the center, push the top of the lantern down a little bit and then you wanna glue the rectangles to the center piece. This is gonna create that pumpkin shape. So glue all four pieces down and then you can close up the lantern. For the stem, you just take the cut piece and wrap it around an object. I used a small paintbrush and then glue the end shut. There is a tab to glue it into that little slit on the top of the lantern, but I didn't like how that was working. So I just cut the end flat and glue that directly to the top. And I absolutely love how these turned out. They are so stunning. put this tower block shelf together in my last Jenga block video and wanted to repurpose it, but I thought this was the perfect size and shape to make a fall scarecrow with. I started out taking four of the Jenga blocks and laid them out where the rim of his hat was going to go. That way I knew where I wanted to draw the face. And I took a pencil and started drawing on his face and it's okay if you mess up. You see me, I keep erasing here. You just keep working at it until you are happy with the way the face turns out. Next I took a Sharpie paint marker and started outlining the face that I had drawn on for my scarecrow. I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and colored in my triangle. While I 
let that paint dry, I took my four tower blocks for the rim of his hat and I started gluing those together. Then I took my antique Waverly wax on a wet baby wipe and I started applying that to the rim of his hat and then I drew a pencil where his hat was gonna go so I knew where to put that antique wax on the top of the scarecrow. Next I took some white puff paint and just added this in to give that little white lifelike look to his eyes. And then I realized I also have black puff paint. So I decided to outline just parts of this, mostly his eyes and then his mouth with the puff paint. I did leave the center of his eyes and then the orange nose in just that flat look, but I wanted it to have a little bit more of a 3D element and this puff paint was perfect for that. Next, I wanted to give him a little shirt and I have this fabric yard that is pre-packaged, ready to go that I bought from Walmart. And I thought it was the perfect print to give this guy a plaid flannel shirt. I did cut out two rectangles of the fabric and then glued them together so that whenever I was folding over his collar, you wouldn't see that white and you would see the fabric instead. So I'm rolling down his collar here and I'm going to just glue that down in place. Next, I'm just going to fit it onto him and I did roll that collar top part down two times and then I want to kind of make those triangles like it's the collar of his shirt folded down. So I just hot glued down the sides of the fabric to the sides of the wood blocks and then I also glued down the top section of the fabric as well. To glue his collar down, I just folded it over and added a tiny little dot of hot glue just to tack it down so that it wasn't too flat against his shirt. And for a last little detail, I added on some buttons to finish off his shirt and this guy is so cute. Oh, daddy just got home, huh? Yeah. Of course, Sarge had to get in the way of my filming today, but you know, that's just life. What do you guys think of this adorable little scarecrow for fall? I am just in love with him. He is so stinking cute. I have this shutter, which I actually found on the side of the road. I have four sets of them and I've slowly been working away at using them in my projects, but I just sanded it down gave it a nice fresh coat of spray paint. And then I'm taking this burlap fabric that I have on hand, cutting it down to the length that I want it to be to cover the bottom half of my shutter. Then I'm going to just rip out a few of the threads from the burlap fabric. I love this look for the fall. It adds just that perfect little rustic touch. Next, we're heading over to the printer. I found these pumpkins and spelled out harvest on my Cricut, but I want to just print it out on my printer using this Hippo transfer paper. So once I pulled my image from Cricut that I found into my Word document, then I wanna print it out. And you want to go into your print properties here and you wanna make sure that you are selecting photo paper and high gloss and make sure that you have it set to color for the best quality. You also want to make sure you print on the white side of the paper and not on the grid side, which is the backing you will end up peeling off. Next, I'm going to cut out my image that I printed out. Now you can use a Cricut if you have one with this paper. I chose not to. I wanted to cut out. Well, actually, I didn't really know how I could get this image then back into my Cricut. I don't know how to print something like this. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. I wanted to cut out each individual letter because I really wanted that burlap fabric to show through underneath. And I didn't want to have like any white border around it. So this certainly was a little bit time consuming. But if you wanted to cut out an image on your Cricut, you certainly could. Now to transfer or iron the letters down onto my burlap. If you have an easy press or a heat press or anything like that, it would work just the same. I don't have any of those things, so I'm just going to be using my good old fashioned iron here. So I place my letters down where I want them to go. I did this one by one so that I could have more control over the placement. Then I laid down the I think it's, I forget what it's called, but it's basically wax paper that comes in your little package from 
hippo and then you want to heat up the paper for about two minutes and then I found what was best was to let the wax paper cool down slightly before peeling it off and that worked out really well. So next I'm just going to lay down my pumpkins and do the same exact thing. I really love the way that this image transferred onto the burlap. You can really see that texture coming through underneath as if this were painted right onto the fabric and I love it. So now I'm going to take my burlap and wrap it around the bottom of my shutter using my finger protector because that hot glue will come right through all of those little holes in your burlap. Then I added some of this farmhouse ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree to both the top and the bottom of my burlap, leaving a little bit of the burlap on either end of it, added in some dried florals, stuck it on my front porch, and this is part of my fall decor. For the next project, I'm taking two of these larger pumpkins that are from the Dollar Tree. I got those this year, and then I'm also taking this little football pumpkins sign that I got last year and just removing one of the pumpkins. We're gonna make a little pumpkin grouping. So I'm starting out removing all of the embellishments and the paper. I was so excited when this paper started coming up really easily, and then about halfway through, it decided not to come up anymore and I just had to rip it. I just took my heat gun and removed this raffia bow and the little leaves that were on top of this pumpkin along with any of that excess glue that was left behind. I also wanna take some spackling and fill in any of those holes and then we can get started with this project. I'm taking one of these peel and stick tiles that the Dollar Tree has around and I'm gonna start cutting out the design. So I wanna cut really closely to that raised surface and I'm wondering, I'll, you'll see in a minute, but I'm wondering if that's where I went wrong with this project, but I wanted to make all of my pumpkins have some sort of texture and I've seen other people use these tiles and give like a 3D effect or where that design comes through. I didn't really get that look, but you'll see that here shortly. So after I cut out my design, I am placing it down in the center of my pumpkin and then taking another one of those peel and stick tiles, cutting out sections of it and placing those around the center design. Next, I'm covering the whole pumpkin with basically a primer layer of white paint, and then I painted it with my mineral colored chalk paint, which I apparently also forgot to record that. I'm really failing in this video today. Once I had both of my paint colors down, then I'm taking my white wax once again by Waverly, and I wanted to use this to really bring out those details in the peel and stick tile that we added previously. And you can see, like you can kind of see it coming through in that detail. Detail, I didn't achieve really as much as I thought it would. Once I had most of that white wax wiped off and it was as good as I thought it was going to look, I'm taking the dark gray elephant color and I'm just adding in those pumpkin details and I'm going to go back and forth with my mineral and the elephant gray color just to kind of blend it all together and make the lines look a little bit less harsh. Next, we're moving on to the middle pumpkin, which I am painting with my moss green color once again, and I just gave this one one coat of the green color. Then I'm taking this chicken wire. I got it from either Joann's or Michael's, one of those two stores, and I'm just laying it out to see the size that I need to cut this down and using my wire cutters to cut it. Once everything's cut out, you just want to carefully start bending the wire around the shape of the pumpkin. And this wire is very sharp, so be careful doing this. I did end up grabbing my needle nose pliers just to help me out and save my fingers from some pain. 
Next, I moved on to the smaller pumpkin and I painted this with the color Fawn by Waverly. And now I'm taking some painter's tape to add a stripe down towards the bottom. So I laid down my first piece of tape where I wanted the stripe to be and then I bordered that with two additional pieces of painter's tape. And now I'm going to paint that center with my ivory color. I did give this two coats of paint and dried it with my heat gun in between. Then removing that tape, revealing a nice crisp line, and I also added a smaller line on top. For the texture on this one, I'm using some shelf liner that I just had laying around in my stash and cut it down to be the same size as the stripes on my pumpkin. Then I took some decoupage glue, added a thin layer of that right over top of the stripe, and then laid down my shelf liner. And using some hot glue, I just hot glued it around to the back. That way the sides would be covered as well. Then I just added a few finishing touches onto my pumpkins. Let me know what you think of this one. I think this is my favorite from today. I saw these owl MDF pieces in the crafting aisle and I think these are out all year long, but I thought they were perfect for a fall sign. I knew I wanted to decoupage them and faux leather accents are trending in home decor, so I grabbed some of my Dollar Tree faux leather in the cognac and black colors. Since this is a thicker material, I used my decoupage glue and put a generous coat on the owls, then added the leather and let that glue dry, then cut off that excess material with my X-Acto knife. I'm going to put these on a sign and want them to pop a bit more, so I painted the edges in the opposite colors. The cognac ones I painted black, and then for the black one, I had to mix up a color that was as close to the cognac as I could get it. When you mix paint colors, you don't want to use the brush to mix it, because when you go to paint the object, you will likely have that unmixed color pushed up into the bristles. So I've started using the handle of my paintbrush to mix. Next, I found this wood sign at Michael's in their clearance section for 75% off. I paid around $5 for it, which was such a great deal. So I removed that raised part with the words, which did rip off some of the paper, so I sanded that part down. The teal stripes don't really go with my vision for this, so I painted them black. Then for the center, I want it to feel more fall and I have a ton of old scrapbook paper that was my grandfather's and I found this greenery looking one that is perfect. So I cut it down and glued it to the center of the sign. Now I started out using my liquid patina, but this wasn't working so well. It was drying too quickly, causing areas of the paper not to stick down and then have bubbles. So on the second piece, I used decoupage glue and that worked much better on this thick paper. However, once both sides dried fully, the liquid patina side actually normalized. It was really strange. Now to add the owls on, I added a Jenga block under each one of them to raise them off the surface a little bit and then hot glued them down. I love how high end yet simple this sign looks for fall. found these laser wood cutouts. I have several of them when I went on vacation, so I had to pick them up. And I'm gonna start out by painting them with a few different colors. So I wanted to make them look kind of fall-like and I wanted the colors to almost look like an ombre and blend together like you would see naturally on the leaves in the fall. So I'm using a combination of pumpkin and lacquer on two of the leaves and then a combination of moss, maize, and pumpkin on two more of the leaves to add that fall touch. And I just played around blending my colors going back and forth while they were still wet so that I could get that nice gradient ombre effect. Next, I found several of these wood cutting bamboo cutting boards while I was on vacation as well and was so excited. So I had to use one of them right away. And then I'm taking some wood glue, painting it on the backs of my leaves, just like I did with my tower blocks and then attaching them to my cutting board.
Next, I wanted to do something a little different. So I've been looking at this wood burning set at Walmart. It's $19.99 and I've really been wanting to play around with it. So last weekend I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna pick it up and we're gonna see how it works. And I am so glad that I did. So what I'm doing here is I wanted to print out the phrase, leaves are fallen, autumn is calling. And I just printed it out on thick cardstock with my Cricut machine. And I'm going to trace over the letters with that heat tool or soldering iron. I'm not really sure what the technical name for this thing is, but I was really surprised when it didn't just burn up the edges of the paper. This also has a heat dial, so you can turn it up hotter or leave it a little bit cooler if you want to. I had it on the middle setting for this, and I actually think I probably could have turned it up a little bit hotter. some of the letters that, you know, I didn't have that little insert piece to add in the center of the A or the center of the E. I just took my time and just kept outlining it going down a little bit further out from the line I had previously. And that worked out just fine. So you can see here my A's and my E's, they are filled in so that you can tell what the letter is. And then here's a close up of how I did the bigger letters. Like I said, I just went in a little bit each time until I was happy with how the letters were looking and how they turned out. And I think this looks amazing. I absolutely love it. done with all the letters I just added a few little dot details around the leaves to tie that part into the wood burned letters a little bit more and then I took my antique Waverly wax and I went around all of the edges and then the corners a little bit just to make it all have a cohesive look look a little bit more aged or rustic so that it tied together with those wood burned letters and that was it for this one I changed my mind several times during this process, but I'm gonna start out by removing all of the stickers. There were several stickers on this box just using my heat tool and a scraper or a putty knife. And then with my goo gone, I still needed to get all of that sticky residue off of these boxes before I could sand it down. That way it didn't just gunk up my sandpaper. And I wanted to sand this down because again, it was a very shiny, smooth surface and my paint was not going to stick to it. So I'm using my Zinzer Bin primer here just to make sure that I get some good adhesion with the paint that I want to use. And I know I'm going super fast, but I didn't want this video to be too crazy long because like I said, I changed my mind several times here, but I'm only gonna show you the parts that I did keep in. So you can see I taped off the inside because I wanted to paint that black part of the box. I ended up painting the entire inside white so taping off the inside really wasn't necessary. Next, I found this fabric at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut it out. We're going to line both the top and bottom inside of this cigar box. So I'm gonna take my Mod Podge, put a good layer all over the inside, and then I'm going to lay my fabric down right on top of that, allowing it to kind of overlap the sides a little bit. And once it dries, I'm going to cut off that excess. I also added a layer of the Mod Podge on top of the fabric as well. Next, I wanted to add some jute twine to cover up those raw edges. So I'm just laying it down right along the seams with my hot glue. Now comes the fun part of decoupaging and adding all of the embellishments. So I found this napkin at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using a wet water paintbrush to kind of map out where I want to rip this. And then it rips really nicely right along that water line. 
and again I am taking some this time decoupage glue and I laid it down put my napkin down on top use my finger to kind of spread it out lay it down but I did still get some wrinkles which I was totally fine with and I also take a layer of the decoupage glue on top of the napkin as well and let that dry once the glue is dry, I'm taking my sandpaper and we're just gonna go along the edges to rip off any of that excess napkin that is hanging off. Now I'm gonna start adding in kind of like an ombre effect. So I'm using that same green Joanna Gaines paint that I used earlier, laid down a section of the green where I wanted that to be and then I also take just some basic white acrylic paint start overlapping the two colors and then blending them together and I worked back and forth doing this until I was happy with how the gradient looked. Now for some additional detail, I'm taking my ink pad. This is from Tim Holtz and it's the color Weathered Wood. And I just put it on this like letter stamp set that I have and I started adding a few stamp sections to my box. Next, I'm taking this IOD trimmings mold and I want to add some trim around the box. So you wanna make sure that you always align your mold with some cornstarch so that the air dry clay doesn't stick. So I just rolled up my clay like a little snake, laid it down into my mold, scraped off the excess and then pulled it out of the mold and it comes out super easy. I This is the first time I've used this and I absolutely love it. So I ended up making five of those because four wasn't quite long enough. And the first time that I did this, I let the clay dry before applying it to the box and it shrunk way too much. So the second time I thought I would add it to my box and glue it down while it was still wet, I did end up with some cracks, but I just filled those in with some joint compound. Now I know this part is a little bit out of frame, but you have seen me do raised stencils several times on my channel. I will link a video for you to watch if you don't know how to do that. Next, I'm taking these pop-up stickers from the Dollar Tree, painting them with my ivory colored chalk paint because I wanted something to kind of go between my trimming mold and then the box because there was kind of a slight gap there and I thought this kind of finished it off really nicely. And I did add some of that raised stencil to the top of my box as well, which you can see here. Now I'm taking my antique Waverly wax and I just want to start distressing this box up a bit because I do want it to look aged and like it's been around for quite a while. And this is where I think I might have gone too far with it. I don't know. You guys need to tell me what you think. I was having a lot of fun with this process. Like I said, I changed my mind several, several times. But let me know what you think of the outcome and what you would have done with this box. project I'm using some of these styrofoam balls that I found at Hobby Lobby they were actually in the Christmas section because of course they already have their Christmas decor out but I wanted to put a hole in the center and my husband had this metal I don't even know what it is like a metal rod so he heated it up because styrofoam melts really easily and then just stuck it down through the center of my styrofoam ball and you can see just how easily this thing melted through. You could also use a drill if you didn't have something metal or something hot to heat up to put through this. But what we're making is little yarn pumpkins and these things turned out so adorable. I ended up making three of these, but I'm only gonna show you one. Here I'm using an ombre, really fun type of yarn. I don't even know where I got this from. I've had it for years, but I started by just cutting off a long strand of it and I'm gonna hot glue the starting point into the center of that hole that we started. Then I'm gonna take some painter's tape, wrap it around the other end so that we can start feeding it through the styrofoam ball. And I actually thought that my hole was gonna be too big here, but the thickness of this yarn ended up making it close up really quickly. All you're gonna do is just keep wrapping this yarn through the hole and around the edges until you cover the entire styrofoam ball. I 
think it was just the thickness of this yarn that made it a little bit more difficult to work with towards the end. The other, the second one that I made was like a normal thin size yarn. You can actually see it in the top of the screen, that yellow mustard color one there. And that one I didn't have any what? issues with feeding the yarn through the entire time. Once I could no longer feed the yarn through the center of the pumpkin anymore, I just started hot gluing strands, cutting them down where I needed to, and that worked out just fine. <laughs> pumpkin was nice and full he needed a stem so I had these little twig branches and I cut one down in half and I'm going to use that to hot glue it as his little stem and that was it for this one you could make as many of these as you want you could make them larger make them smaller make them all different colors to fit into your home decor <music> I bought this chunky blanket yarn from Hobby Lobby and I'm weaving it through the whole wreath. I did cut long sections of the yarn to make it a little bit easier. So once I got to an end, I just glued the next strand right onto it. Since this stuff is so fluffy, you can't even tell. And at the top, I glued the yarn all along the edge. To embellish this one, I wanted to give plaster dipped flowers a try. I have been seeing this a lot all over my Pinterest feed and watched a few videos from other creators. All you need is plaster of Paris, water, and glue. I'm not sure if the glue is 100% necessary, but one of the videos I watched said this helps the plaster to stick. So the plaster says to mix one part water to two parts plaster. I did that for the first batch, but then used a little bit less plaster the second time, and I prefer it to be a little bit thinner. Plaster starts to set up pretty quickly, so you only want to mix what you can use in about 10 minutes or less. And I'm using a silicone bowl and spatula since you cannot put this stuff down your drain. Once it's hard, it's easy to get rid of right off of that silicone. Once everything is nice and mixed up, you can start dipping the flowers in. I'm using some of these dogwood flowers and dip them into the plaster. And then use my spatula to make sure it gets in between all of those petals as well. I found it's best to work with white flowers if you can. They are easier to cover in one coat. And then I hung the flowers on a line to dry over some wax paper. The second batch I did, I decided to paint on and see how that looked. So I used a sponge brush and applied the plaster to a fern stem. I prefer dipping into the plaster a little bit better. I think it turns out a little bit cleaner in the end. Plaster completely dries in about 30 minutes. I waited a few hours to be sure, and then I also dipped a few of the pieces a second time. Once everything was ready to go, I'm adding the pieces to the bottom of my pumpkin wreath. I just used hot glue, and I'm really not sure how long this would hold up for. I can't imagine it will last past one season, but it turned out really cute. I'm taking some birch wood logs. I picked up a whole big box full of these for $5 at a garage sale, and I'm gonna cut them down into wood slices. Using my table saw here so that they are all the same thickness, I used one slightly larger log, one thinner log, and for the larger one, my saw blade was not quite tall enough. So I did have to go in with my miter box and just finish cutting it down a little bit so that I would get that perfect wood slice piece. And for this project, we're gonna be using the Hippo Water Slide Decal Paper. And again, you only need your printer for this. And I'm gonna to go to pixabay.com to find some images here. Pixabay has thousands of free downloadable images. At the top of their site, there are images that you can pay for, but if you scroll down, everything here is free. So I found some autumn leaves that I liked, and you can click on the free download. A pop-up will appear that asks you what size you want to download your image, and then you can download it for free. 
super easy and there are tons of great options on here for any style. After you print your image, you want to spray it three times with a clear sealer, letting it dry for 10 minutes in between each coat. So once I had my leaves printed out, I also printed out the word fall and I cut out each of my letters individually, just like I had done with my harvest word. And I wanted to add everything to these wood slices, just the raw wood slices. Now the water slide decal paper does not say that it will work with wood, but I did want to give it a try. It really didn't adhere to the wood really well. I wanted to give it a fair shot. So I did add all of my four fall letters onto four of the wood slices. And then I started to let it dry, but I could tell pretty much right away that it just wasn't going to stick. So this part wasn't going to work out. And I ended up having to take my white chalk paint, paint on a little circle so that the water slide decal paper would have something to adhere to. Once I had painted my wood slices, the letters just stuck so much better. So I am using slightly warmer water here and you wanna make sure that you also add water to the surface of your project, just so that that water slide decal is going to really nicely slide off of the paper backing. And I found that if you let it sit for too long in the water, it starts to come away from that paper backing, but you really do want it to stay attached. That way, when you go to add it to your project, it is going to just slide right off the paper and stay intact exactly how it was, hence the name water slide decal. And I found about 10 to 15 seconds worked out perfectly. Next, we're going to drill some holes in the top of our wood slices since we are making a garland. So I put two in the top of each of my wood rounds. Now taking some two millimeter macrame cord, I'm just going to string up all of my wood rounds. I did take a few 12 millimeter beads and added them to the garland between my wood rounds as well. And that was it for this project. I thought these water slide decals were so much fun to work with and so budget friendly to get that cricket or professional look from your projects. Guys, fall is upon us and I am so ready for my favorite time of year. So for this project, I'm taking various widths of one buys and making a pumpkin. Measurements are on the screen, but you wanna cut the pieces slightly taller because I'm going to cut the tops down a bit. I drew a tapered shape on one half of the wood pieces and then I can stack the duplicate pieces and cut them together with my jigsaw so they come out symmetrical. Then I sanded the edges, but I won't bore you with that part. I want there to be a gap between the boards and I'm going to attach them using macrame cord, but first I need to drill a hole where I want the cord to go and then paint the boards. I wanna see that wood grain peeking through the paint, so I did a whitewash. I also gave the pumpkin a little dimension by lightly dry brushing some curved lines over it. I didn't love how the top of the pumpkin was looking, so I drew a new line on top and recut the pieces so it kind of had a dip in the center where the stem would go, and I think that looks much better. Now we can finally add the macrame cord. I put a piece of tape around the end and put it through the back hole on one piece and then down through the second hole next to it, and then tied a simple knot in the back and hot glued the knot down so you don't see it through the crack. Next to help the pumpkin stand on its own, I glued some scrap wood pieces to the back for support. And last, we just need that stem. I had this branch in my stash and I'm going to hot glue it on top. 
This angle is a little hard to see, but to make it look a little cooler, I got out my natural clay. Yes, the clay I used a few videos back that was an absolute nightmare. I wanted to torture myself and see how it would hold up being wrapped around an object. I mixed up some slip, which is clay and water. This acts as a glue for the clay, so I had some hope here. Then I rolled out the clay and attached it to the stem using the slip and blending it all together. It was looking really nice and I set it aside to dry overnight. Ugh, it completely cracked and the little pointy pieces broke right off. I should have known that was going to happen. The only part that didn't crack was the part not attached to anything. So strange. But I redid the stem with my Crayola air dry clay and got the exact same result. So I ended up just filling in the cracks with some spackle and painting it. this project, I'm taking one of these little owls that you can find at the Dollar Tree right now. They're like little ceramic owls and I'm painting this with my maize colored chalk paint by Waverly and you can see how sheer this color is. I ended up having to give this little owl four coats of the maize colored chalk paint. And I'm painting a second one in the moss green color. And you can see the comparison here of how much more coverage the moss color gives compared to that maize. And I don't know if it's because my maize yellow color was a brand new bottle. I've only used that one other time a few weeks ago. And my moss green color is that bottle is almost empty. So I don't know if it's just because the paint was a little older. It has a little more coverage, but you could see the difference. Then I took my matte clear enamel spray paint just to seal these up before moving on to the white wax. Of course, I forgot to record that part, but just sprayed the clear matte sealer all over my owls. Let that dry and then moved on to the white Waverly wax, which I am putting all over my little owl. And I know I'm out of frame here, but you just wanna wipe it back with a paper towel. You don't wanna let it sit for too long. I worked in sections here so that I could um, wipe off a majority of that white wax before it was stuck on my piece. So the green owl got the white wax and then the yellow owl is getting a dark wax, which is just the antique Waverly wax. This is an idea I got 100% from Upcycled by Brie. I saw her do this on one of the Dollar Tree foxes. I couldn't find one of the foxes in my store, but I thought these owls were, owls were just as cute. So I wanted to do the exact same thing. She took a yellow DIY paint and some dark wax and I just thought it turned out stunning. And look at how much that wax just sits in the details and really brings them out. That was it for this one. Super cute added to my shelves for some fall decor. I'm reusing this wood frame from an old project that I no longer use and making a fall wall art piece. I first painted the frame white and then I wanna add a fabric background. This striped fabric is from Dollar Tree and I'm going to add it to a piece of foam core board. I'm using my DIY liquid patina to attach the fabric and added a thin coat to the foam core board going section by section since this stuff dries pretty quickly. I did not put the liquid patina on top of the fabric as well, only under it. And then it cut the corners out and hot glued the excess fabric down to the back. For the art piece, I got this idea from Pinterest where I saw someone made pumpkins out of doilies and thought it was so cute. I picked these ones up from Dollar Tree and kept one its regular size and painted it in the color Pumpkin by Waverly. Then I cut the second one a little bit smaller and painted it sage. 
I also cut out some regular poster board and painted it in the same colors to fit under the doilies and hot glued them together and then to the fabric. For the stems of the pumpkins, I'm using aluminum foil. I bunched it together and shaped it to look like a fancy, whimsical stem, and then painted it with Fawn by Waverly, then added a dark wax on top, but you can still see that foil peeking through a little bit. Once that was dry, I glued it to the pumpkins, and that's it for this one. More of a Dollar Tree DIY than scrap wood, but it's super cute. <laughs> 